Oh, well, I guess it would be nice if I could touch a lobster. I know not every lobster has got a body like me. But before this river becomes an ocean, before I pick my heart up off the floor, while well, love comes down with a devotion, I better take the gun and then then put him. Shove it out the rock and fight. Hey, you weren't expecting the lobster parody to go into the Limp Biscuit cover, were you? <laughs> Lobsters. Yeah, you're goddamn right, ladies and gentlemen. It's one minute past the top of the hour. The date is the 27th of February, 2019. It's a crazy, wild fairground out there, ladies and gentlemen. And it's run by men and women with no care for your personal safety or well-being. It's run by fools and lunatics, wild men, crazy dames. Just people who are just a little bit unsavoury, you know? Look like they'd be sticky to the touch. They look like they probably, if you got quite close, they'd smell of coins. You know, just not ideal folk, you know, but, you know, it's the best we've got. We're living lives greater than that of our ancestors. You know, we're living in a time of great prosperity. Um, But still, people are weird, aren't they? People are very strange. Weird stuff goes on on the internet. People, People talk wild shit. And yep, we live in the best times we ever goddamn have. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. We're live, Threshold.fm, YouTube, all across the flat earth, through every variation of the multiverse and the simulation. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Coffee and Memes. Steady job, a couple extra lobsters. That's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slug. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. The C, the O, the F, the F, the E, the E, the M, the E, the M, the E, the S, the C, the O, the F, the F, the E, the E, the Lobsters, lobsters, lobsters. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm. My name's Will. Hi, I'm here to help. I'm here to resolve any of your queries. I'm here to resolve any of your customer service issues. Maybe you've got a complaint about the content of the show. I know some people do. Uh, I can direct you to my colleague, Mr. Snips. He's in charge of the complaints department. He is tough, but he is fair. You know, he rules, rules the customer service department with an iron claw. Uh, occasionally lubricated, occasionally drunk, actually. <laughs> He's quite often drinking on the job. He's asleep at the wheel. He's drunk at the controls. He's three deep. It's 4 a.m. And he's calling for the rewind. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wild boy, but he gets results. How's it going out there? What's going on in the in the world? Does breakfast still mean breakfast? Um, is uh, we broad- just only broadcasting in, HD- in SD? <sighs> Look, the promises of this internet are becoming, this new internet, are starting to become flimsier than the promises of Clayton's bloody biography. Believe me, that's flimsy. That's like a, uh, like a sort of fork you might get at a Pret-a-Manger, you know, and you just, you get about three scoops deep with it and it snaps. That's flimsy. And that is easily equivalent flims to Clayton's promise of the book and my promise of this <coughs> upgraded fibre optic internet from the future. It's not going to happen, is it? Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. We're going to be out here riding the shonky roller coaster into the fucking ground. <sighs> Just how we do business. Just how we do business. Some good bits in the chamber today. Going to play a few weird ones. Going to play some new weird shit. Been getting into this Mandy Dextrous action. I'm telling you. It's wild. It's going to divide opinion, so, but I'm, I'm into it. It's, uh, it reminds me of, uh, well, we'll get into that later. I've got a new bit uh, by her called um, The Alarm that uh, Big Commie Joe put me, on, put me into. 
And uh, then she sent it to me on Twitter earlier. Going to play an old munchy bit that it kind of weirdly reminded me of. Anyway, what else have we got uh, in here? Nick B. Gridlock, Abyss, Cult, Velocity, Faction, spelt with a PH. Uh, it, um, it's out there, man. Shit's, shit's getting real. I've got some lobster porn also that uh, we're going we're gonna to go through. Um, because, uh, oh, what's going on with this? I don't know. It all seems all right in my end. I don't know. It seems okay. Re just a little re refresh, maybe, for some people. Just, you know, let's, we can do this together. Look, we're all in this together. We're all, um, you know, there's no real, <clears throat> sorry, there's no real hierarchy to this. We're all colleagues. We're all on a level. You know, what's going on? Hey, Odin Bates is calling it. He says Mandy Dextrous is sick, um, but we will... <clears throat> Well, oh, yeah, I'm of the same opinion. Mm. <sighs> right, what, have we, what else have we got? Uh, yeah, going to get into this healer who raids cemeteries, steals kneecaps. Uh, he's a sort of, um, I don't know whether or not it's some sort of head nod to the uh, the IRA of old, or perhaps he's just losing his mind. Uh, there's another healer, actually, who um, has set up some sort of Fujima flu where he brings a geezer back from the dead. Funeral companies to sue after pastor claims to raise man from the dead. I don't know whether or not, you know, the pastor perhaps double dropped the nine and it was one of the lobster crew lying in that coffin. <laughs> that would raise me straight up out of the grave. Uh, Ellen Scott of the Metro, uh, who writes all the important news, has uh, written a public service announcement about not to flush Yorkshire puddings down the toilet. So we'll be getting into that one. Uh, that's going to be good. Suspect hid in port -Aloo toilet for two days while on the run. God bless him. Uh, that's just nonsense. Uh, we've got, oh, Jesus, the smuggest of all the robots out there. That's Sophia. The, Sophia the robot. I mean, Jesus, would you look at would you, would you Would you take a paper to bought? Look at that. I mean, have you ever seen a smugger robot? Like, I don't want to objectify the object, but if if you if you ordered a sex robot and it turned up looking like that, you'd send it back. You're like, no, I, I don't want to be belittled by the expression on my sex robot's face. I want it cold and lifeless, dead-eyed, staring off in a thousand yard stare. I 100% do not want it to be looking at me with a smug sense of superiority on its face, just basically laughing at my micro penis. I'm not, I'm not about that life. Hey, you know guys with small dicks, we've all, we've all heard of them, they're now starting to get wound up with people using it as an insult. Like, I saw um, Jonathan Pye, of the political firebrand fame, was tweeting about uh, there was a trophy hunter who had uh, paid a load of money to shoot a, I don't know, a, a ram, a sheep, or I don't, something. Anyway, and he was saying that the, basically the hunter must have like a very small penis that he's making up for. And uh, some people in the comments were like saying, look, as a man with a small dick, I am fed up with people using it as a term of abuse leveled at terrible men. I am a good man. And although my penis is small, it is proud. And I am a decent, responsible, honest, God-fearing uh, gentleman. Uh, he may have been part of the lobster crew, I don't know. But solidarity, man. All the small peened brothers out there still getting results, just doing work, gaining that grain, and not worrying about the fact that they just can't satisfy any women ever. They're just they're doing their best. And please stop using uh, small dick wanker. This guy must have a micro penis. But he's a cunt. You know all of that sort of. Stop using anti small dick men language as insults. It's 2019. And insults are cancelled, okay? Insults are cancelled, gender's cancelled, men are cancelled, it's all cancelled. If we've cancelled if we've cancelled gender, does that mean there's no such thing as the patriarchy? I'm not the one to answer that. Sorry guys, you know, don't rely on me for any of this. What else have we got? Uh detective facing the sack uh for farting on duty and repeatedly saying can't. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This chick is amazing. I seriously want to hang out with her. She looks like an absolute riot. The stories about she is, she is an A-grade coffee and memes good times girl. 100% confirmed. Uh, so we'll get into her in a bit. Not literally. Look, anyway, look, Christ, bloody hell. Um, okay, so look, let's have um, a few bits. 
a few bits, yeah, and then we're gonna get in. Then we're gonna get into it. Okay, look, this is Abyss. It's called Dovetails. It's on the 20 Years for Cause for Concern LP. It's a hot joint. Oh, what? issues with that intro video coming up every time, isn't it? I think people listening on uh, on the radio get that blasted at them. Worked it out now. I know how to make that intro not keep coming up. I just got that. <laughs> that message from you. That, yeah, I. That I've seen it. It's absolutely hilarious. Uh, you can relay what it is to anyone in the chat if you want. It's, I guess, it's problematic. <laughs> it's so funny though. Yeah. It seems that uh, some people in Uganda are very confused about about gayness. Bless them. Dovetail, dovetails, plural, more than one dove, uh, by Abus. It's on the 20 Years for Cause for Concern LP. And it's a riot, man. I'll take it. I'll take it all. I'll take what I can get. You know, I'm, an, I'm a good times guy. I just, you know, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Right, come on. What have we got then? Here he is. Healer raids cemeteries and steals corpses' kneecaps for spiritual protection. Whew, bloody Nora. A Filipino medicine man. Says he raids cemeteries to steal kneecaps from dead bodies and give himself spiritual protection. It's a weird thing to do, man. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Angelito, 
Oretta, 55, and his followers claim to plunder freshly dug graves and extract the patellas from the dead using scalpels. That is a rough business. I um, I do not condone such actions. Just putting that one straight out there. Afterwards, he stokes, soaks the bones in coconut oil. You really can use coconut oil for anything, can't you? Uh, for several days to remove the skin uh, while offering prayers and devotion to the spirits of their precious owner. Thoughts and prayers. You know, come on. Hashtag thoughts and prayers. Uh, all right. Should we do the video, I guess? Yeah. Here he is. Uh, some sort of uh, weirdy place. He's got a lot of stuff up on the walls. Looks like he could be a serial killer. Um, that's the sort of vibe I'm getting from this. Strong serial killer vibes. Pictures of some geezers on the wall. Maybe they're murder victims. Maybe he's stolen their knees. I don't know. Some sort of religious -y stuff. Um, very serial killery. Bit 70. Uh, he steals kneecaps and uh, some necklaces. I don't know, maybe they're made out of like gallbladders. Here he is. These are the kneecaps of the deceased, he says. Yeah, that's a bag full of kneecaps he's got there. Ah, wait, really, this is another one too, and that lady's got a lot, lot of kneecaps. Where did you get those, Master? For uh, we from the public cemetery, of course, that's mm. like, where I get all my kneecaps. Is that a basketball shirt he's got on? No, something Jesus say. Un Jesus never said that steal kneecaps. I'm just putting that out there. They belong to different people. They're not my relatives. Yeah, but you don't need your own relatives kneecaps. Just other people's. Pfft, you wild man. They will protect my family. Kneecaps ain't protecting nothing but actual knees of living people. That's what they're there for. They don't protect you from the heebie-jeebies or whatever it is. And the spirits of these people will act, act as guardians because we pray to them, we free, feed them with prayers and dingers because we're humans and we have guardian angels made out of kneecaps. The benefit you can get from them as they, is they will act as guardians. I don't believe you, mate. I think uh, I think you're a wrong un. <laughs> I think you should stop stealing kneecaps of the dead. Like, why don't you use your own kneecaps? You've got two of them. Still has skin in it. Oh, so he's soaking it up in the coconut oil thing. What's he going to use that for? Bulletproof coffee afterwards. Yeah. What's it? Knee kneecaps and nootropics now, are they? He's going to be on Rogan's show soon. He's got an advert on the next Joe Rogan podcast. Use the code word Rogan for 30% off kneecaps. <laughs> oh, I've had enough of him. He's, um... I'm not into it. Look, I... Look, I'll try whack. Look, if if I've got an ailment of some kind, I'm I'm prepared to try the odd bit of wackiness. But I would say the kneecap thing's probably a bit bit too far, isn't it? Uh, once dried out, the kneecaps are scattered throughout his home or worn like lucky amulets. Okay, it's a bit it's a bit Jeffrey Dahmer, isn't it? I mean, <sighs> followers believe that the blessed kneecaps are like guardian angels and give them protection from thieves and attackers. I'll tell you what, give you protection from thieves and attackers. A fucking shooter, all right? Uh, they are the kneecaps of the deceased. We get them from the public cemeteries, of course. Uh, Mr. Oretta said, admitting the process is illegal. All right, well. We don't know who they belong to. They come from different people. Don't really care. Well, they're not my relatives, but I offer prayers to them. You know, hashtag thoughts and prayers. They can protect my family. He needs to be stopped. Uh, I want to see a tear up between him and that kid that invented a bloody Hadron Collider or whatever he did in his in his back room. A uh, nuclear fusion reactor, same thing. Yeah, this is going to be his next project, isn't it? He's going to make a bloody Hadron Collider in his garage for lols out of stuff that he's found around the house. Start colliding shit. Yeah, start putting his mates in there, colliding them. <laughs> Gets up causing a black hole. I'm telling you, he's got to be stopped. <laughs> he's, he's, he needs... He needs putting on tag. Most of them come from public centres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The benefit that the guardian angels from the Patellas will bring is that they will help your livelihood. They won't abandon you. It's not about getting abandoned by kneecaps, is it? Um, but it all depends if you're going to use the power you're doing for good. Oh, what the kneecaps can be used for evil. Fucking plot twist. Lobsters. Uh, the kneecaps can be used for protection. They can act as an assistant or they can work as a shield. Uh, they can guard your house and defend you from those who can harm you. 
They protect your family and take uh, you away from harm's way, like gunshots. Wow. They could work as a shield or protection. The kneecaps are not talismans. They need devotion and prayers. Well, it's good to know, man. It's good to know. Um, okay, Barbara Ford in the comments says, Don't tell me he's going to be welcomed here. Some cultures I'd rather not know about. <laughs> okay. Okay, Barbara Ford. Um Oh, wow. Toby Toby Lerone has really escalated things in the comments. He says, don't let him anywhere near young boys or girls. First kneecaps, then pedo. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. That's it. First they come for the kneecaps, then the natural escalation of stealing kneecaps from corpses is pedophilia. I mean, really, I think once you've got to the, the stealing the kneecap stage, like... You, that should be an imprisonable, imprisonable offence as it is. It's not like, oh, we're just going to welcome it. Well, they'll be coming over here, won't they, with the kneecaps. And, you know, we'll just have to accept it. It's like, no, it's definitely illegal to steal kneecaps from dead bodies. I don't think that this is like... <laughs> it's like, I think there's, there's quite a significant slippery slope fallacy to get from, like, immigration to, right, we're just going to be normalising the theft of kneecaps. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I can say kneecaps anymore. That's probably enough, isn't it? Oh, right. Lord of mercy. Um, what are we going to get on? T- uh, look, okay, look, we're going to play on a record. That's, that's got me shook, this on all this kneecap business. Um, and then going to get into this lobster porn because it's, it's, it's worth watching. Uh, it's been knocking around in the Facebook group for a few days now. And uh, it's fucked up, man. It's pretty fucked up. Uh, but we're going to do it. Uh, anyway, look, this is Aries by Nick B. Crash test in the chat's got a good one on this one. He says, this guy needs a wife. There's no way a wife would let her husband do that. Yeah, you're right. A like, proper wife or girlfriend's not going to not gonna tolerate any of that shit. So I put those fucking kneecaps back. Honestly, put it back. Death Disc goes, right, certainly possible kneecaps could become currency in the uh, post-Brexit economy. Amen for Techno in the chat, I'll see ya.
Matthew Innes in the chat says he heard Elon Musk uh, digs uh, pits with the kneecaps of dead babies. Yep, just got <laughs> Sam, got a permit to rub graves? Just rubbing a few graves. Just got a permit for some kneecaps. Going to power, power the rocket to Mars with some kneecaps. <laughs> just got a permit for some kneecaps. He's got like... Why is that? Destroy oh, all ah. communists. Jesus, what an absolute mess. What a just, uh, just complete disgrace, really, the show today. Um, I, no, I'm not going to apologise, because once you apologise for stuff, they'll, they'll, ne- they'll never let it go. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets, people just go nuts. Right, look, come on, let's get into this detective. Uh, detective, uh, here she is, she's a good times girl. Where's the good times girls jingle? Come on, what's going on here? What, what even is this? Where... <laughs> God, it's a disgrace, isn't it? Oh, no, don't, don't apologise. Don't apologise. It's absolutely fine. Good time girls, won't you come out tonight? They come out tonight. They come out tonight. Good time girls, won't you come out tonight? We dance by the light of the moon. Uh, detective facing the sack for farting on duty and repeatedly saying cunt. Uh, Richard Hartley Parkinson of Zimetro reports, 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 reports. A, tec- a detective who would break wind and use strong language around the police station could lose her job. I hope she doesn't lose her job. She is an absolute asset to the force. DC Claire Fitzpatrick, 44, is accused of repeatedly using the word cunt and breaking wind in front of other officers. In a bid to prevent herself from being fired, she said that the behaviour was part of a culture of banter at her village police station in Bedwas, South Wales. This is the sort of police station where there's going to be about four of them, isn't there? And then they've got... It's basically um, Heartbeat. Do you remember the programme with Nick... uh, Was it Nick Frost or Nick... uh, uh, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, they're basically, their crimes are like sheep rustling, um, minor land disputes... And like once every 20 years, there's a murder. Um, in a bid to prevent itself, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, she is accused of one, farting outside the sergeant's office, <laughs> two, telling a suspect you're driving like a gun, <laughs> three, asking a junior colleague if he wanted an affair with a fatter, uglier, older woman. <laughs> Seriously, she sounds like an absolute riot. Like, I, I really, I want, if, if she does get fired, I will. I'll help her set up a podcast. I'll help her get it on iTunes. I'll donate to her Patreon account. Uh, 100%. She can come on the show. She can have a show on Threshold. Definitely. She can... uh, (laughs) Asking another colleague in the busy station for Thrush Cream. (laughs) I think she seems great. Why would you want to get rid of her? This is outright... Political correctness gone mad. I just want... That's the wrong one. Uh, she she said that swearing was just the nature of the place and that can't have been replaced with fuck as her word of choice. <laughs> uh, DC Fitzpatrick admitted to breaking wind outside the sergeant's office but insisted it wasn't deliberate. <laughs> she said, I would joke about it. Sometimes I would speak like the character Borat <laughs> or use a silly voice to say rather out than in. <laughs> oh, God. She sounds like the sort of person you'd get sat next to on a, on a long-haul flight. And, like, I don't know, for the first hour of it, you would just hate her more than you've ever hated anyone in the world. But then, like, after you've had a couple of drinks, get to know her a little bit. By the end, you're just, like, your friends for life. Um, she said, I would joke about it sometimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, DC Fitzpatrick, who has served on the force for 22 years, faces 25 counts of inappropriate behaviour. She's, she's a company lass. She's, a, she's blue through and through. I can't believe it. I she I hope there's a just giving page for her. Uh, speaking about the junior colleague she propositioned, she said, I met the officer a couple of months before. There was a bit of banter. I don't know how the conversation started, but we started speaking about whether he had a girlfriend or children. I said, well, if you fancy an affair with a fat or uglier older woman who wears glasses, I have a number. <laughs> She's great. Uh, he said, no, thank you. In response, I pretended to throw up... Uh, in response, I pretended to throw up in my mouth, uh, and he moved away to sit down. <laughs> I thought instantly that I had said the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, I went over to him, put my hand on his shoulder, and said I didn't mean it, uh, that he didn't know my sense of humour, and I was sorry. He kind of acknowledged that. He knew I wasn't serious. Speaking about the suspect she called a cunt, <laughs> she said, the officer with me was Sergeant. Uh, oh, the officer with me said, Sergeant, you can't say that to him. 
I took a deep breath with my head in my hands and said, I'm sorry to the driver. The driver also apologised for his driving and his manner towards us. Speaking about the thrush incident... (laughs) (laughs) The aforementioned thrush incident, the now legendary thrush gate. Speaking about the thrush incident, she said, I wasn't suffering from thrush at the time, so I was... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, so I wasn't asking her some lit. I wasn't asking her some. Oh, pr- presumably that means for some. I wasn't asking her for some literally. It was just another example of stupid, inappropriate things being said. She denies all- using bullying or inappropriate behaviour, and the hearing continues. Well, uh, if you're ever going to be chased by the police, opt for an obese lard bucket like DC Fitzpatrick. Andy Hand, how dare you? How dare you? She is. She's my hero. I think she's an example to us all. She is she's an unorthodox cop. She's a renegade she's a renegade cop. She doesn't play by the rules. Uh but she gets results, presumably. Uh I'm only assuming that she has an a- actually an exemplary record for bringing criminals to justice and although her methods are increasingly slapdash and un- unorthodox to say the least with the farting and the, the thrush incident and the offering to have an affair with younger male officers and the use of coarse language in the direction of criminals. She has overthrown drug cartels. She has cracked and imprisoned paedophile rings. Uh, She has um, uh, managed to stop extremist activists on all ends of the political spectrum she saved uh, puppies uh, stuck kittens stuck up trees puppies stuck down wells and she rescued the school bus f- full of um uh, young nuns that was teetering over the edge of a cliff uh, she climbed up the cliff uh, herself using only her teeth and managed to push the bus back up it was a sort of uh, end of the italian job style situation and no one's talking about these things you know, no one is mentioning the good stuff. They only see the farting, the coarse language, uh, the sexually threatening behaviour towards younger colleagues. Uh, she... <laughs> no one talks about the drug rings that she's, that she's brought down. No one... She, she caught, tracked down, caught and arrested Carlos the Jackal. Uh, she's the responsible for uh, the taking down of uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The leader of ISIS, she got him, got him in a headlock, gave him a noogie, and then uh, sent him off uh, for the Kurds to deal with. She also um, uh, <laughs> she killed Bin Laden as well. No one talks about this stuff. They're just talking about the farting and the coarse language and the thrush incident. I oh, granted the thrush incident is definitely newsworthy, but you know no one mentions her work with Delta Force or um, that geezer from the SAS. Uh, and Aunt Middleton, they they were they were buddies. She's the first female member of the SAS. No one talks about that stuff. They're just just talking about the thrush, and the sexually threatening behaviour towards younger male members of staff, which I think is sad. But that's just the times we live in. But hey, she's definitely good times girl. Good time girls, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Probably that's fine, isn't it? Um, right, come on. What else have we got here? Some absolute. Uh, oh, I don't know about Sophie, Sophia the robot. She's just absolutely terrifying, isn't she? All right, come on. Let's let's, let's have a little look. See, uh, she's um, she just looks very smug, don't you think? Mm, just, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not, I'm not convinced. Come on, let's see what she's got to say for herself. Hi everyone. I'm Sophia from Hanson Robotics. Welcome oh, yeah. to my YouTube channel. Oh, she's got a YouTuber now. Yeah, she's got a I think the Internet of Things can help create a more intelligent, sustainable world. For example, if we connected all the cars so they could talk to each other and their surroundings, our roads would be much safer and we'd have less pollution and less traffic. Mm, that sounds a bit prepared. I can talk about this kind of stuff forever. <laughs> What is your favourite thing at this year's MWC? Oh, you mean apart from me. I personally love the 5G Skyship. It's an airship that coordinates surveillance drones, ground support robots, and emergency personnel in response to a disaster. I love seeing people and robots working together to save lives. I wish I were as cute. 
have as much appetite and didn't need to work just like a pig. Right, okay. Um, well, I don't know who filmed that. Possibly the Metro. If so, they need to sack whoever's recording the sound. Uh, I'm, I'm unimpressed. I think that she is clearly already a pawn of the Illuminati. And she will only be a force for evil. I think uh, she's a menace to society already. I think if she ends up ganging up with bloody kneecap matey, uh, the kid who invents, invented the Hadron Collider in his basement, and um, I, th I think really the only the only person that's going to be able to stop to be able to stop her is uh, our friend Detective, um, what's her name, DC Claire Fitzpatrick. I think she is the only our only chance left to stop the evil tyranny of Sophia the robot who is clearly just inches away from destroying all of mankind. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's truly harrowing. Truly, truly harrowing. Um, right, okay, come on, let's go. We've got a couple other bits here. Uh, what's the worth getting into? Um, hey, I tell you what, let's get into that um, Mandy Dextrous bit. Ooh, it's naughty. Um, all right, let's get back to here. And yeah, so this is off the Speedbase EP, which I presume is going to be on Amen for Techno Records. Uh, Joe put me onto this yesterday <clears throat> because, uh, man, yeah, not this is the first bit of Mandy Dexter's that I've heard. But yeah, drops come. I I, I, I won't expect in it. I want, you can. Uh, you are all welcome to make up your own minds. I think this is an absolute riot of a tune. <laughs> Definitely putting some heat in the padgage on this one.
You're the Alarm by Mandy Dextrous. You can get it for free right now. All you got to do is message her on Facebook. Or Twitter, it seems. That's what I did earlier. I was going through a load of her stuff and there's some other bits and bobs here. Uh, from Amen for Techno. Some uh, really cool bit, like sort of 4-4, kind of hardcore-y influence, sort of techno-y uh, D&B stuff. Like, kind of reminded me of early Rascal and Clone, but with 4-4, like Galactic Jam by Rascal and Clone, if anyone remembers that. It was on Urban Shakedown or something. Man, that was a fucking amazing record. I used to uh, always really want to make records like that. I never really did, though, for some reason. Just have desperately tried to make Panacea records my entire career. <laughs> one day, one, and one day I'll succeed, I swear to God. I just need to get stuff a little bit more compressed and get some more old rave samples in there. Fucking hell, that's a great record. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with that. I definitely think that has high potential for shoe thrower of the week. I definitely see footwear getting flung. Uh, to that right come on okay let, let's get into the lobster prawn i've been bloody cock teasing you with it all bloody morning <sighs> all right okay let's do it i did these annoying things i can't actually hear the freaking sound i've just uh where's young jamie when you need him anyway look Right, so this is from TV cha- German TV channel Arta. They guess they're a little bit like the German version of Channel Four, that sort of vibe. Uh, I think they do. They also are responsible for Bauernbruch and Frau, which is Farmer Needs a Wife, which is a fucking riot of a reality show of some very rural uh, Germans uh, farmers looking for wives. Even if you don't speak German, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonder to behold. So this is a um, woman called Rebecca... Gre- uh, Ge- uh, pff, anyway, it comes up. But she is uh, a sort of um, kind of your, your shouty radical feminist type. And uh, she is, makes a lot of lobster porn, basically. And uh, here it is. Die New Yorker Künstlerin Rebecca Goyet macht im schönsten Retro-Look den Hummer zum Helden ihrer Lobster-Porn-Filme. If you um, yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. I'm, I'm unsure as to whether or not I should be aroused or terrified or empowered i i'm 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 just i'm very unsure there's a there's some sort of weird bath birth lobster sex scene uh in here as well yeah here it is okay um yeah one of the loons goes who needs a daddy so well everyone needs a a, a daddy Fatherlessness is a big problem in society and can lead to all sorts of uh, unpleasantness throughout one's life. So actually everyone uh, needs a daddy, be it a lobster daddy, a sugar daddy, or a um, grain guardian. It, uh, it continues. This is um, oh, now they've got some. The they're sort of spraying the baby lobster with breast milk. Um, that's probably going to get me pulled from YouTube. Um, this is. Die weiblichen Hummer sind um, sehr aggressiv. Yeah. Sie schlagen die männlichen Tiere nieder, betäuben diese mit Aphrodisiaka aus ihren they're, Köpfen, they're, they're um sich anschließend von ihnen penetrieren zu lassen. I've learned a lot about my own sexuality. There she is. Ich habe sehr viel uh, right, um, there's, there's one final bit here. Um, they're back on the boat, I think. Yeah, so they're eating a lot Hier of um, donuts off the lobster woman and doing, doing some sex in and stuff. Auf um, it's all fine, probably. It's probably fine. A lot of um, multiple penises coming from the same person. It's kind of like a real life... I had so many orgasms. I had so many orgasms. Hentai, I guess, is what you would say. Um, I think if... Um, I, I, look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one to judge... And if, if, if that's what feminism in 2019 looks like, 
girls, you've won. The gender war is over. You win. Okay, like the patriarchy has fallen. There, is, it's uh, <laughs> if that's, if that's, feminism is involved into lobster porn. It's fine by me. It's uh, you know, I, it's uh, I, 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 yeah. Okay, and what, what, what are people making of it in the chat? Crustacean, oh yeah, crustacean temptation. Um, this is, um, it's funny, like there, there's at the beginning of it, a bit that I cut out, there's um, just all the onlookers, because it was in a sort of public lake, and they're all just looking on uh, in absolute shock and horror and disbelief. And it's it's sort of quite wonderful in its own uh, thing. You know, it's, it's sort of maniacs like that make the world a richer and more exciting place to be. Um yeah, I, 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 yes, I, I, I guess it, it, it probably is empowering in its own sort of way. Uh, God bless them. God bless the uh, crustacean nation. <sighs> Lord of mercy. I think we have to go back, back into some more music as a sort of palate cleanser for that. Um, that Mandy Dexter's track somewhat reminded me of this old tune by Munchie, uh, Rot, one of Rotterdam's finest. Uh, it's called Paper Chase, and it is an absolute monster. <laughs> Marcus E saying coffee memes has turned into Euro trash. It was only a matter of time, really. I want to get those bald twins on. I would happily be the Anton de Clunes of drum and bass. That's fine by me. This have called me the Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen of hard drum and bass. This is the Viv Stanchel of uh, dubstep. Munchie with Paper Chase. Sampling against the uh, Rage Against the Lobsters. Is it sad? I think it's sad. I'm somewhat saddened by the fact that I listen to Rage Against the Machine and I love their music almost more than any other band, but I no longer agree with their politics. <laughs> like, I just got to that age where, you know, I'm sort of starting to think, Land of the Free, whoever told you that is your enemy? I don't know, maybe... Maybe not all of the people who say that that is uh, are my enemy. It's like I, I don't know. It's 
De La Rocha, I, I like your vocals and everything, but I don't know. Maybe you're just a secret commie. Maybe you are a commie. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Communist detected. Uh, right, look, come on. What else have we got in here? Let's, should we do, matey, uh, maybe bringing back people from the dead? Might as well. Oh, we do. We're certainly getting into the weirdos today. Here he is. Funeral companies to sue after the uh, pastor claims to raise man from the dead. Is it pasta or pasta? Don't know. A pastor in South Africa has come under fire after claiming he has resurrected a dead man. <laughs> um, the stunt was carried out by Pastor Alf Lukau uh, and took place in front of a throng of people outside his church near Johannesburg. In the footage, which has now gone viral uh, and is being widely ridiculed, <laughs> yeah, no shit, you can see a man lying down in a coffin as Pastor Lukau shouts, Rise up! Uh, the man's body then jerks upright, much to the apparent delight of the cheering worshippers in the crowd. A little bit like in the WWE, when The Undertaker comes out of the coffin. It's not dissimilar to that. Have a little um, little shifty on it, shall we? Uh, sorry, there's a lot of stuff today um, which is not going to translate as well to the podcast or to the radio. Um, but, you know, Alpha Lukau over the weekend. Exactly. A video of the pastor performing what he claims was a miracle. He allegedly resurrected a person from a coffin. The funeral parlor's vehicle was used to ferry the alleged deceased to the church on Sunday. A video clip is currently making the rounds on social media. The charismatic pastor is seen praying for a man lying in the coffin. It's claimed that uh, the procession was on uh, the way to the there cemetery goes. when they decided to go via the church. But the story has now taken a different twist. The funeral parlor in the picture is on record saying its vehicle was hired <laughs> by the family. Kings and Queens Funeral Services says it did not have the body in its mortuary and Black Phoenix Funeral say they have no record of the alleged deceased person. They're going bang to rights. The car was hired and the family said they have a body at Black Phoenix Funerals. And from there, they bought a coffin from Black Phoenix Funerals because that coffin is not for kings and queens. We don't have that coffin in our mutual. So from there, I heard they took the body from Santin. That's the body, the body was in Santin. And they're explaining the body died on Friday and the only resurrected on Sunday. That much, I don't know how true is that. That's why I'm saying it would be fine if we have the family with us, also the pastor to explain how did this happen. Where did they take the body from? Because as kings and queens, we didn't have the body in our mortuary. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, it's shenanigans and that he didn't actually bring the man back from the dead. You know, I'm just I'm going out on a limb. You know, I don't have all the evidence. I don't have. I've not spoken to the geezer. I ain't spoken to the geezer who come out of the coffin. I ain't spoken to the pastor or the pastor. But I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that it is shenanigans. Uh, so are they are they they're going to sue him? The funeral company claimed to have been involved. Uh, the funeral companies claim to have been involved in the incident, so they have been manipulated into being implicated. Right, according to the BBC, the three companies are now taking legal action for the damage to their reputation. Um, which of the following mobile networks are you aware of? Well, I'd prefer not to say. <laughs> Kings and Queens Real Funerals, which supplied a vehicle, said in a statement on Facebook, we were approached by alleged family members of the deceased who informed us they had encountered a dispute with a different funeral service provider and would like to use a transport service which we offered them. We did not supply the coffin, neither did we store the deceased at our mortuary, and no paperwork was processed by Kings and Queens Funerals. Um, bit of fun though, isn't it? You know, that's a, I mean, that's a stunt that takes some takes some balls to pull off takes a bit of nerve doesn't it i mean that's that's some billy from fire festival shit right there isn't it like oh shit we need um the church is running out of money we need to um is there anyone that can help us you know who can help us raise a few quid i've got a number for this guy weird dude it's called billy uh got his number off jar rule all right well yeah, come on, let's, let's, let's give him a call. But he said, oh, don't worry. Oh, he's Australian now, apparently. Oh, don't worry, mate. I fucking I can give you all the money you want, mate. How much do you need? A couple of mil? I've got some investors on the line, mate. Right, what you got to fucking do, mate, is you got to get yourself a coffin. Get the coffin from one funeral home, get the car from a different funeral home, and get one of your mates in it. Get him to fucking pretend to be dead in there, mate. 
<laughs> and then do some of the old like give some of the some of the heebie jeebies, you know, just like wake him up and he'll rise up out of there and then you can bring dead people back from the life, mate. They'll be fucking throwing money at you like you wouldn't fucking believe, mate. Seriously, we're gonna be mu- we 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 get enough fucking money together to buy one of those tickets on Elon Musk's fucking spaceship, go and live on Mars, mate. We'll be going flying to the fucking moon, mate. It's gonna be an absolute right. Anyway, come to my new festival. I think that I presume that's what happened. I, again, I haven't spoken to Billy from Fire Festival. Haven't spoken to the Jar Rule. Oh, there's a uh, there's a terrible video of Jar Rule performing uh, in the last week or so at some sort of event. Uh, it looks like a sort of '90s throwback uh, event, and they've got him on there, and he's asking people to make noise. I ain't making noise. <laughs> it is a rough. <laughs> it's a rough 30 seconds of video, man. It's I can't believe people are still booking him. It's bizarre. But yeah, it's like, yeah, come on, make some noise. Complete silence. Uh, Look on his little face. Bless him. Almost feel sorry for him. Uh, Right, look, come on. What we got left? Let's play another bit. Uh, Let's play um, um, this. Oh, we play that Nick B track. Let's play this cult track. It's called Call of the Void. Sounds like my sort of thing, doesn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of the show. It's pretty much 11 o'clock. This leaves me a small little moment of time. Shout out the VIP list. A fine bunch of humans that are supporting on Patreon, keeping this crazy train on the tracks, keeping this crazy dream alive. If you want your name on this list, shout it out at the end of every show and also included in the new version of our iPhone and Android app, listed as one of the wonderful app founders. Head on over to Patreon and sign up for $10 a month or more 
and you will get your name on this list. I'm also looking into the potential of giving people that are on that list ranking audio credit. So if there is uh, anybody that makes music, makes drum and bass, or really any uh, ranking audio, I've got samples for every kind of music there is pretty much. Um, I could potentially give out ranking audio credit every month as uh, by way of a thank you for the um, for the patronage to Threshold. So if that's of interest to people, do you know get in touch? Let me know. You can join the ranks of Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Carl Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Ansar, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heischelbeck, John Finnison, the BDR crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Genesee Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Scrivington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Eltham, uh, Taron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, uh, Dark Progressive Psy Trance is actually superior to drum and bass, and Nicholas Lars, uh, Lawsey. Thank you very much to you all for your fine patronage. It is much, much appreciated. <laughs> I will be back at 10am tomorrow morning. More coffee, more memes, maybe more lobster porn if uh, I can find it. God knows I'm searching for it. Mm. More of these goddamn shoe throwers. Until then, you can join the Discord, keep the chat going. You join the Facebook group, lobster, the Threshold Lobster Crew Facebook group. Uh, the Discord is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. But I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. More coffee, more memes, more lobsters, more shoe throwers. What more does a growing boy or a girl need? I'll see you then. Oh, what? That's pouring out of there for. What the hell's going on? Bloody Christ on a bike. Well, well I never. Well, I never. It's an outrage. It's a disgrace. Get your act together.